succeed tonight. Out there, and hey, someone's coming. DTE is back to Pine Knob. Give it up, man. It's awesome. The only problem is now I don't know what to call my hand carved sex toys. Can never get a break. I'm gonna tell you what, it's, it's, it's rough out here sometimes. Uh, I can sense out there, it's like, I wonder what's up with that guy's love life. So I'm gonna tell you it this way. You got three people having sex, you call that a threesome. Well, you can just call me handsome. recently, a couple weeks ago actually, I just turned 48. Um, you know what I'm working on certain things in my life, and you kind of address things, because everybody's got stuff, everybody's got problems in life. Mine is, I have no chill. I have no chill. I, I go too far with things sometimes. So give me an example. I decided I wanted to try one of those puzzle rooms, you know, like one of those kind of like, you know, things that you go in and you have to solve and figure things out. Like, I'm gonna try one. So I found one, had this really mysterious name, and I'm like, I'm gonna go in that one. So I went inside, first thing I see is I see all these drawers. And I'm like, all right, that's where the clues must be. So I start digging around in there. They're filled with women's underwear. <laughs> Odd, a little off-putting, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going in. I want to solve this problem. So I'm in there, I'm digging around. Um, and then I'm looking around, and they have all these like these mannequins all over the place. It's like, the fuck is this place? But I'm like, you know what? I'm going in. I'm in there. I'm feeling up the mannequins, looking for trap doors or something like that. Um, and you know, next thing I know, I've got two security guards taking me out, and I can't go to that Victoria's Secret. <laughs> I never even got to find out what it was. <laughs> it's terrible. It's just an awful thing. You know, another thing I've been working on. I've been trying to become more patriotic. You know, it's, we've been going through some tough times here in this country. I've been trying to become more patriotic. So I went out and I got the most American thing you can possibly get. Type 2 diabetes. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, that's right. It's good stuff. It makes me feel good, it makes me, makes me feel like a real man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like my, my lips start going numb because I ate a piece of cake. I call those my freedom tickles. <laughs> it's good stuff. I actually have one of those, uh, one of those flag, uh, Blue Lives Matter flags with the flag on it, you know, in, in the, the like, line. Uh, the difference is with ours is the, uh, the little colored line is the same color as a bag of uh, Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> That's my own kind of thing. And, but you know what? I want to I wanna go back a little bit. I want to roll that back. Um, you know, I, I didn't get type 2 diabetes. No, I, I ate a Taco Bell like eight times this week. I earned type 2 diabetes like an American. Can I get a hell yeah for that? Yeah. That's right, that's right. Um, you know, I kind of actually, my dad has type 2 diabetes too, so it's sort of like a family thing. Um, which is a weird way to transition into making fun of my parents, but that's what I'm gonna do right now. Um, them that much. Really, I mean, I'm really grateful my dad's 83, my mom is 74, they're still healthy. I feel really lucky, you know, that I've got my parents still with me. And it made me think about what a judgy asshole I was when I was a teenager. Is anybody else like judgy when they were a teenager and like, oh, my parents, oh my god. Um, it made me think of this time that my dad, um, my dad was outside, we had, a, we had a swimming pool in our backyard. Now before you think, Oh, sure thing, Richie Rich. It was like an above ground swimming pool, you know, like a hillbilly hot tub kind of a situation, right? So he's getting out of, out of the pool, and I'm like, oh my god, my dad's so disgusting. Oh, look at how hairy he is. He's so hairy and so gross. Oh my god, I'll never be as hairy as he is. You know what? I sent that out to the universe. I got it right back. I'm not as hairy as my dad. I'm like seven times hairier than my dad ever was. It's ridiculous, you know? I was born in the 1970s as a young kid, so it's completely possible that my mom might have fucked Clyde the Orangutan from uh, Every Which Way to the Loose. It's a total possibility. If there's any single ladies out there who have like a King Kong fetish going on, come see me after the show. 
could be a good time. Actually, you know what? I was doing a show this one time, and there were these two ladies that worked at the dog grooming parlor. That uh, it was, a, it was a fun time. I, I had no fleas, for a couple of fleas, and I smelled like oatmeal, which was nice. So it was a really good time for me. It was, it was pretty great. Uh, yeah. So uh, as far as dating goes. See, you know, I had to kind of adjust my, my expectations a little bit. You know, being 48 and all that sort of stuff. And instead of having somebody or expecting somebody to look at me and go like, hmm, he sure is fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking more for somebody that's like, all right, fine. <laughs> that's, that's good enough. That'll do. That'll do for me. That's pretty good. Um, I did have something really exciting happen recently. Um, I started sexting. With somebody. It's pretty new for me. This is kind of a new thing. It's this, uh, this person said she was a MILF. She was DTF. That means down to fuck folks. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, if we can make it IRL, that means in real life. I'd be happy to show her all eight eggplants. And she said, cool. So now I'm going to have to tell her I'm from Canada. <laughs> That's a metric system joke, by the way. Um, yeah. If you go home, look in your desk, and pull out the ruler and flip it over to the other side, the one you don't use all uh, much, and be like, oh, that's, that's not impressive at all. <laughs> Ooh, sir, it's not great. It's not great at all. Um, well, uh, I did it. It's, I, Dating in your 40s, it's a really, really weird experience. Like, for example, I met this person. We met on a dating app, right? Um, and we went out for coffee, and it was really great. We talked about ourselves. One of the things I talked about is that I like to cook. I do. I really like to cook. So she said, oh, well, maybe I'll come over to your place, and you can cook for me. And I was like, hell yeah, I will. <laughs> Sounds like a, like a quick cookout kind of situation. I'm coming into that. So we set a date. She came over, I had this beautiful dinner all set up and ready to go. She walks into my house, and she looks around and she says, This place looks way too nice. You must be married and or gay. <laughs> and or? <laughs> you should see her face when my wife and boyfriend got home. <laughs> I'm Daryl Bean, so I'm uh,